Hi, Chanel here from Tips and Tricks HQ and in this video tutorial, we'll look at how an invoice can be created in one's PayPal account and then sent to a customer. The invoice is virtual and is automatically sent to the desired customer via email where they can then pay the merchant using their credit or debit card or PayPal funds. PayPal invoices are entirely free to create and send and the only fee you'll pay is the general PayPal transaction fee when the customer makes a payment. There are a number of different invoice templates or you can also create a customized invoice for your customer. When a merchant completes an invoice and sends it off to their customer, the customer will receive two notifications. One notification in their email that'll let them know that they've got an invoice that needs paying and one in their PayPal account. So they can click on that link from their email or from their PayPal account and then make a payment to complete that invoice. If you're a merchant and you'd like to go ahead and create your very first invoice for one of your customers, follow along and I'll show you exactly how to do so. So you'll first need to go ahead and log into your PayPal account. Once you've logged into your PayPal account, click on Tools and then on Invoicing. That'll bring you to this page here. If you've never created an invoice before, you might get a notification saying that you have not yet created any invoices. Although in any circumstance, you can always click the Create Invoice button to create your very first invoice. If you've already created an invoice, you'll see them under the Manage Invoice section. So I'd just like to show you if you have created an invoice and it has been unpaid, you can go ahead and remind the customer that they need to make the payment. So you can send it to their email, you can choose to send yourself a copy of the reminder and you can personalize the reminder. Clicking out of that, and I click the down button, you can also edit, copy, record payment, print, PDF, share link or cancel. So there's a number of things you can do if you've created an invoice to ensure that it is paid. So now I'd like to show you how you can actually create your very first invoice. So I'll go up to the create section and you can either click create invoice or you can click this large create invoice button on the right hand side. So if I click on that create invoice button, it takes me to the create invoice page. So there's basically a number of fields here that you can fill out to create your very first invoice. In terms of templates, you can choose a template that best fits your invoice. So for example, if you're a building company, you might pick the hours template as this will give you the option to have hours and a rate and then it'll add up a tally of your hours and rate. If you're invoicing a customer for an amount only, you can pick the amount only or a quantity, pick the quantity template. So in this example, I'll choose hours as I'll be demonstrating how a construction company could invoice to their customers electronically via PayPal. So I've gone ahead and I've just added a little logo, just an example one from Google Images there. I've chosen my template hours frequency. This will just be a once only invoice. Although if you wish to send the invoice weekly, monthly, yearly, quarterly, or a custom time, you can choose them from the drop down menu. You can choose the invoice date. So I'll just be leaving it as today's date and you can choose when it's due. So due in 10 days. I don't wanna be waiting for the payment. So I'd like to really push that along. Then you'll need to choose who you'd like to bill it to. So this is important that you put the correct PayPal email address of your customer. If you've forgotten their email address and you've sent money to them previously, you can actually go up to settings and take a look at your address book. So that will list everyone you've basically sent money to before or someone who sent you money. So then you can copy their PayPal email address straight from there. So I know my customer's email, which is great. I can just add that straight in and it might even pop up halfway through entering it if PayPal recognizes that email. So I've added that in there. And if you'd like the invoice to be copied to any other emails, you can place them in this field right here. Or you can also bill multiple customers. So that's a great little feature there too. If you've got a number of people that you need to bill the same invoice to, just make sure if you do that, your invoice is generic. So I'll just be sending it to one customer who owes money for some construction on their property. So scrolling down, the, under this description, you can put building, so building of fence front of house, hours will do, took them 15 hours to build, they charge $30 an hour, so basically this customer owes $450 for the building of the fence at the front of their house. So I'll update the item, 
saved. I can add another item if they need to be charged for something else. So they've had some bricks laid at the front of their house as well. That took the workers 10 hours and they charge $35 an hour. So I've placed that in there. So basically we've got one cost of $450 and one cost of $350. If I save that item there, everything will be totaled at the bottom. So the customer owes $800. You may have had an agreement with the customer to give them 10% discount off the subtotal. And you can basically just add that in there and it will be subtracted from the total. So the total now is $720 and that will be sent with the invoice and they'll be told that they'll need to pay this invoice within 10 days. So scrolling up so you can see everything that we've completed, you can customize all of these details. You can add tax, item discount date. In the subtotal, you can add shipping, custom amount. So there's a multiple custom options that you can add. So I'll go ahead and add tax just so you can see how that works. So I might like to add tax here. Add new tax, so tax name, go and the rate, say it's just 5%. So we'll save that and that'll add the tax there. If I want to add tax to both items, government tax 5%. So it remembers the one I've entered in and update. And now that tax has been added. So $36 there in tax. So that'll add it back onto that total amount. So you can allow your customer to make a partial payment, although in this circumstance, I'd like to them to pay in full. So I won't be ticking this box and you can allow a customer to add a tip. Why not allow your customer to add a tip? So I'll check that. You can add extra notes to the recipient. So for your customer saying, so thank you, it was a pleasure doing business. I've just added that note to the recipient and you can add some terms and conditions if you wish there. Also, you can attach files here. So say you might wanna add another receipt or you might have something to give the customer or a voucher for next time. If they make the payment, you can attach that file there. So basically that's the end of this. You can add a memo to yourself. So this is something that you can just add to yourself saying, this customer needs to pay by this date or whatnot. Your recipient won't see this. So it's basically just a note for you as a merchant. So I won't really add one there, but I'll just go over and I'll check everything. I'll preview my invoice. So I know that they need to pay $756. And we'll see if they do so by the 11th of August. So once, once I send this off, as I mentioned earlier, that customer will receive a notification in their PayPal account as well as their email account. So then they can choose to click on one of them and pay the invoice if they wish to. And up the top here, I'd like to either send via PayPal or share link myself. So the difference between this is send via PayPal, PayPal will send that straight away to their email and their PayPal account. But if I choose to share the link myself, it'll give me a link to this invoice that I can then send to my customer myself. So if I share the link myself, PayPal won't do anything further here. They'll just wait for me to share that link. So this works great if you want to share the link, say via Facebook Messenger or some sort of social media outlet. But in this circumstance, I'll go send via PayPal so that all the hard work is done for me. So if I click that button there, my invoice will be sent. So I'm notified here that my second invoice has been sent and I can check on the status. So I can see that the first one that customer has viewed, but the second one has just been sent. They haven't yet viewed it. So if they've viewed it and unpaid, it may be a good idea to send them a reminder in a couple of days. Maybe they're just waiting on some funds to come through themselves and then they'll send it to you. So it's a good idea to just manage your invoices. Just keep an eye on who's paid and who hasn't. When an invoice has been paid, that status will be updated, say paid. So that's basically the invoice feature of PayPal. It's a nifty little feature that can help you gain funds sooner and quicker rather than having to do hard paper invoices to your customer. You can just do a virtual invoice. So you may now be wondering what the difference between requesting money and sending an invoice is. So when you request money from someone, it will actually just request that amount and you can't add a lot of details. Whereas an invoice, it allows you to add multiple details and multiple charges. So I'll basically just show you, if you go here, you can even do it from this section here, you can request money. And if I'd like to request again from that same person, go next, I can request $20, just do Australian dollars. I can just write a note. 
just request that money and I can go request now. So that's basically the request, which is actually quite different from an invoice. And I find that the invoice is a lot more formal if you're needing to request money from a customer who needs to pay a large sum of money. For example, again, with the construction and building industry, they like to invoice their customers after the job has been done usually. So that's a great, great way to do it through PayPal. So that basically sums up this tutorial on how you can create and send an invoice to your customers. If you have any further questions or queries, feel free to comment them below and we'll try and get back to you.